Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're going to be taking a look at Anno Mutationum on the Nintendo Switch, a cyberpunk action adventure game with RPG elements. Played it previously on the PS5, I was a big, big fan of what it did, but I was also extremely curious now to see how it all came together on the Switch hardware. So with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals near daily, and let's get started. If you are thinking about grabbing Anno, then consider using cornershop.gg for discounted eShop credit. You'll be getting 10% off at checkout using code CORNER, and these they will be instant delivery via email. Story then, and we take on the role of Anne. Within the first hour of gameplay, we discover our brother Ryan is missing, and we take it now upon ourselves to uncover his location. Now, it's quickly recognised he is in trouble, mixed in with the wrong crowd, and now we are going to be heading out into this world to rescue him. His issues, though, they're basically linked to you because he was searching for a cure for a sickness that you are suffering from. It's an incredibly well handled story and yes the setup it is simple but where it succeeds is the wealth of characters that populate this incredible world and also the twists and turns the narrative takes. We'll see everything though from the futuristic locations that we do expect to more think downtrodden. We'll even meet those in the street where we can eavesdrop on conversations. Everything is intentional in its writing, whether it's pushing the main narrative forward or simply evolving this world around you. It rounds it out then with a great sense of humour, a hacker friend that assists and adds some assistance, documents and text files as collectibles, and then a side quest. This city, Scop City, it's one of the best cyberpunk worlds I've seen in video game form. It just feels very much alive. Gameplay then and we play as title Anne and the game shifts confidently between 3D movement and 2D combat as well. The 3D sections they are exploration to gathering clues, seeking out mission markers, while the 2D elements that's going to be for the combat and that's going to be action platforming. It just allows for what is a more flexible moveset. The exploration though simple enough, we can explore, we can progress a mission or we can investigate a number of locations. Think here though everything from stores to make purchases like items and weapons or simply learning about the locals around you. A particular highlight for me seeing these like holographic like bands perform in the street it just adds some personality to proceedings as you witness the crowd discuss and embrace them. The controls here though are simple, full 360 degree movement, we can interact with doors, items, things like that, think crates, a huge amount of them around this world, and then we can also hack via what is a simple mini game. This is going to be everything from accessing computers to opening doors, it's a game of lining up the keyhole correctly. The real highlight for me though with exploration, it's just how many of these locations are accessible. So often we see a game where every doorway is locked, but here that is not the case. I loved exploring, selling items to those around me, or finding just simply something new to interact with, like mini games that we'll get to later. You also then start off in what I'd describe as a relatively small location, but quickly you get access to your car and you can travel across what is a world map with multiple areas. These are purely cinematic, there is no car control at all. This is also handy though as it actually shows via the map your progression including side quests. We'll even with progress then at some of the larger locations find the fast travel locations. These also act as a location to save the game as well, although there's an autosave in here and it is well handled. It's pretty aggressive so if you do die you're rarely going to lose much in the way of progress. My main issue with exploration though honestly it can sometimes just feel a little awkward with the movement and navigating the map. It's going to be particularly true if you're running towards the camera and looking for a doorway. Just it's something about the pixel style in a 3D world you can't quite at times recognize the depth of the image. When it comes to navigation as well, there is a map in the top left of the screen, it's not the best at times honestly, and the same can be said for the full screen map from the pause menu as well. Looks incredibly stylish, it's in keeping with the cyberpunk theme for sure, but its style somewhat stands in front of you know, the game's ease of use. 
Combat then is what many will be coming for and that's where the game switches to its 2.5D design. This allows us to leverage two weapons from the face buttons, that's a weak and a strong attack, a shield to defend which can also parry, of course that relies on perfect timing, and then we can jump, double jump, dash and shoot. Dash will be essential because it will allow you to obviously avoid incoming attacks and it does seem to provide some minimal kind of invincibility frames. We also get some overpowered attacks too, should we stun an enemy, these are completely cinematic but they look great. And then there's also an OP mode as well, but I don't want to talk about that too much, just purely down to spoilers. The combat's are really fun though, we get everything from the weak to huge screen filling bosses. Many just have a health bar but they will overwhelm in large numbers. For those, I like to strike them into the air and then juggle them with my sword. Others, they'll pack shields, they'll demand some more strategy. It just mixes up the enemy type frequently enough that rarely did it feel repetitive. There is a few noticeable difficulty spikes in times to be aware of but get past those bumps and it is overall a well accomplished fighting system that delivers more than enough as you quickly learn new attacks and defensive responses. This is all as well elevated by a skill tree system alongside what is some really well designed platforming sections. The skill tree system it relies on you collecting a gram from enemies and in the world and we get three trees here that's going to be expertise, tactical and basic. It's going to have everything from expanding inventory slots to new attack types to improving stats. This can and will define the way you play so do go in and choose wisely. Alongside of this as well we'll even be able to craft items and use them on the fly using the d-pads. Finally then you can also upgrade weapons with different parts that are constructed and also then what are known as chips. Think a chip that adds an attack buffer to your weak swing. My favourite personally was dual welding swords while attaching a critical chance hit as well. On a combat front though honestly very few complaints occasionally it can be difficult to identify enemy placements and a few of the stuns like one that flips your controls temporarily to represent dazed it's a little too much in my opinion but yeah look overall really fun as you kick some serious ass mix in then the fact it's so effortlessly transitioning between 2d and 3d and yeah from a gameplay perspective this is overall just really well realized Alongside this then expect everything from a bar mixing minigame arcade units to moments where you control a mech though the latter not as exciting as it sounds. Also on top of all of this as well it's worth knowing the runtime of this one you're looking at about 10 to 11 hours for the main story somewhere close to 20 if you try to overcome all of those side quests as well. On to overall problems with the game then, on the Switch the frame rates dropped, we got 60 on new gen consoles, here we are definitely targeting 60 but it is unlocked and we tend to sit around the mid 30s. It does have some noticeable drops so to the 20s specifically in the latter game and these are typically larger locations when there's so much going on. Definitely didn't ruin my enjoyment, it's definitely kind of momentary, but it's mostly exploration based when it does occur. The combat fortunately tends to be more stable and that's going to be great for that sense of responsiveness. A couple of other minor issues and I had a sequence when Anne would not grab onto a ledge for some reason but it corrected itself after a few attempts. Also then if you're coming into this one just know it's not a bug but do come here with some patience around load screens. They're not frequent, they're typically between locations but some of these areas they can be noticeable. Wasn't awful I will say that but they're definitely on the long sides. Visually then Anno is an indie game and while the gameplay is really well done it's the visuals that are just so impressive. For me it's one of the most unique styles I've seen in a long time embracing that heavy pixel work but giving it a 3D edge and modern sensibilities. It's somewhat similar to Cloudpunk but the neon streets and locations here they just hold us so much to admire. Throw on top of this then though while I've done animations for combat over the top action sequences and a clear love for Blade Runner and I couldn't get enough of it. Even the main menu and the load screens they are just incredibly stylish. No real complaints visually from me outside of the map which we touched on earlier and just occasionally the movement think like climbing a ladder you can actually see there's no connection between the character and the world. 
finally if you did play the ps5 build like me you may notice the world as well it does seem the number of pedestrians has been cut back just very slightly and repetition in character design because of this it's definitely more apparent So the audio and another win of the music does a great job of capturing the futuristic nature of the world while being often incredibly intense to reinforce the action. It's topped off then with some greater sound effects that pad the combat and the ambience for this world like the changing tones of the streets think hearing music in the distance from nightclubs it just brings it all to life. Finally the voice acting it's not frequent but it is there for key cutscenes and they did a really really top quality job here on the delivery. Before we do get to the final verdict then I do want to address finally what's new as this is released following what is a few patches and we're getting all of the content here. This you'll basically find the combat has been balanced as well as bugs have been addressed but the biggest bit I think the thing that most switch owners may notice we get a new game plus mode on completion which adds a higher difficulty option but also then a new ending. They also expanded upon the original ending with new animations making it the best build of the game alongside its peers on other platforms. So the final verdict and Anno Mutationum is a great game, look sure it has quirks, a few difficulty spikes through your progress, a camera that can feel a little awkward to navigate in the 3D moments, even with the combat at times or at least the exploration in 2D, the platforming I encountered a few moments you know where it wouldn't do quite what I wanted it to do, but with all of that said, even the frame rate restrictions, it can't dampen my experience. The story is just so intriguing it kept me hooked from beginning to end and then the constant switches between 3D and 2D just felt so unique and so well handled. For me on the PlayStation honestly this is a 9 out of 10 at game, on the Switch I'm going with a great 8 out of 10, they've made compromises but if you like Cyberpunk this is the game for you and kudos to the small indie team behind it, this one here it is a hell of a job. And that's the video down, will you be adding Anno to the library or holding onto that cash with that then like hit subscribe. Join us here for reviews and deals near daily and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.